Hello everyone, this is PaleoNerd here with a not so brand new video and the return of natural history. Before I get to the more derived Tyrannosauroids in part 2, I figured I'd redo my part 1 video with some updated information and some new genera, while also omitting the possible Tyrannosauroids section for use in part 3. This will probably be the closest thing we get to a Halloween special this year. You don't really expect anything spooky unless you're really afraid of Tyrannosaurs. Tyrannosauridia, or tyrant lizard forms, is a superfamily of theropods within the clade Solarosauria, which is characterized by unique skeletal features, mostly in the skull and pelvis. This group existed for a huge part of the Mesozoic era, from the Middle Jurassic to the Late Cretaceous, about 166 to 66 million years ago, and fossils assigned to this group have been found throughout the Northern Hemisphere, particularly Europe, Asia, and North America, as well as even part of the Southern Hemisphere, particularly South America and Australia. Although most people think of the larger, more derived members of this family, like Tyrannosaurus, Tyrannosaurids didn't start out as apex predators with short two-fingered arms and massive jaws. Instead, they started out as small carnivores with long three-fingered arms that often had to be careful not to become prey themselves. This superfamily can be divided into two main groups. Proceratosauridae and Pantoranosauria, which both appeared during the Jurassic period. Proceratosauridae, or before Ceratosaurus, is a family of Tyrannosaurids that consists mostly of small predators with three fingers and can be distinguished from other basal Tyrannosaurids by the presence of a unique crest running along the top of the head likely used for display purposes due to their thin and often fragile nature. There are only five named members of this family so far, all of which are found in Eurasia. The family has been dated from as far back as the mid-Jurassic to as late as the end of the early Cretaceous, about 166 to 120 million years ago. Proceratosauridae can be divided into two main subfamilies, which I will call Proceratosaurinae and Eutyraninae. We'll start off with Proceratosaurinae, which includes all Proceratosaurids more closely related to Proceratosaurus. Members of this group can be distinguished by their smaller size, larger and more elaborate crests, and a lighter build. They are commonly known from Europe and Asia, and lived through, from the Bathonian of the Mid-Jurassic to the Oxfordian of the Late Jurassic, about 166 to 160 million years ago. Although some teeth remains found in Europe, formerly thought to belong to dromaeosaurs, may indeed represent members of this group. If by any chance this is confirmed, then this could extend the span of this group to the early Cretaceous. The earliest known member of this subfamily, which happens to be the namesake of the entire family of Proceratosauridae, is Proceratosaurus bradleyi, or Bradley's ancestor of Ceratosaurus, referring to the now incorrect theory that it was an ancestor to Ceratosaurus, and honoring F. Lewis Bradley, the man who discovered the first and only known fossil of the animal in 1900. The theory that it was an ancestor of Ceratosaurus came from the fact that the type specimen, a partially complete skull, seemed to have a small nasal horn resembling that of Ceratosaurus, which at the time was classified as a Solurosaur. However, in the 1980s, it was found that Ceratosaurus was not a Solurosaur, but rather a more basal theropod. As such, Proceratosaurus's classification was reconsidered. It was then considered a close relative of Ornitholestes, another solarosaur thought to have similar head ornamentation, but in 2010, Proceratosaurus was found to be a basal member of Tyrannosauridae. 
As such, the family of Proceratosauridae was formed, named after Proceratosaurus, the first genus in the group to be classified. Proceratosaurus lived 166 million years ago, during the Bathonian Age of the Middle Jurassic, and was found in the White Limestone Formation in what is now England. In life, Proceratosaurus is estimated to reach a length of between 2 to 3 meters or 6 to 10 feet long, a height of between half a meter to a meter or 1 to 3 feet tall to shoulder, and a weight of around 75 kilograms or about 165 pounds, and as such was a relatively small animal. Unfortunately, not much is known about this animal as, the only, as only the type specimen has been conclusively attached to it. Although from the razor sharp teeth, we can conclusively say that Proceratosaurus was a carnivore and likely ate whatever it could catch, from lizards to small mammals to frogs to even baby dinosaurs. It is the only named dinosaur from the White Limestone Formation, although footprints suggest that it likely coexisted with large sauropods, whose young may have served as prey, as well as another theropod, possibly a megalosaur, which were the apex predators of Europe during the Jurassic period, and as such they may have preyed on Proceratosaurus. The owners of these footprints could indeed be closely related to Cetiosaurus and Megalosaurus respectively, as the two are known from the same time period and close in location to where Proceratosaurus was found. While many portrayals of this animal show up with a Ceratosaurus-like nasal horn, it is far more likely that it had a much larger crest that extended from above the eyes to the nose, like many other Proceratosaurids. It also likely had a covering of filaments, a trait believed to be common in all Solarosaurs. However, this is mostly speculation, uh, and until we find more remains, that's all we'll really know about this animal. The next member of this family is from the same time period as Proceratosaurus, and we know just as much about it. Found in the Etat Formation in what is now Siberia, Chylascus aristoticus, or lizard of noble origin, is derived from the Kakas word for lizard and refers to its classification as one of the earliest Tyrannosauroids. It lived 166 million years ago, during the Bathonian Age of the Mid-Jurassic, and it is estimated to reach a length of 3 meters or about 10 feet long, a height of about 1 meter or over 3 feet high at the shoulder, and a weight of around 75 kilograms or 165 pounds. Kyleskis was named as recently as 2010, and like Proceratosaurus, very, very little is known about it as it's only known from fragmentary remains from the jaw, hand, and foot, although some other remains have also recently been, have also recently been discovered. While it lacks evidence of a crust, it has been classified as a Proceratosaurus due to similar features in the jaw fragments to Proceratosaurus, and as such it likely did have a crust like other Proceratosaurids. Another similarity to Proceratosaurus is the fact that Chylescus is also the only named dinosaur of its formation, although remains of a heterodontosaur, stegosaur, and a mementosaurid have been found, but they are currently undescribed. It is likely that Chylescus hunted the an these animals for prey, or at least their young. The Neornithischian Kalindodromius is also known from the nearby Ukureyskaya formation of the same age, which contains a theropod tooth which may belong to Chylescus, indicating the two may have coexisted. While there is no evidence of other theropods in the Tot formation, it is very likely that Chylescus was not the top predator, and it's possible that some larger predator lived in the region perhaps a Metria Camposaurid, which, which were common in Asia during the Jurassic period. Again, like Proceratosaurus and every other Tyrannosaurid in this video, Chylescus was likely covered in filaments, but unfortunately we don't know much about this animal and will need more 
fossil remains to tell us more about this creature. The next member of this family is known for much more complete fossils than its predecessors. Wanlong Wukai, or Five Colored Crowned Dragon, is another dinosaur with a non-Latin scientific name, as not only the generic name but the specific name as well are derived from Mandarin, and it refers to both the colors of the rocks as well the colors of the rocks it was found in as well as the crests on the animal's head. It was discovered in 2006 in the Shishugao Formation of Western China, which has been dated to the Oxfordian Age of the Late Jurassic about 160 million years ago. It is one of the most well-known Proceratosaurids, and it is the main basis for filling in the blanks for its predecessors. The animal is currently known from two nearly complete individuals, an adult and a juvenile, which paint a very good picture of what this creature looked like in life. It is estimated to reach a max length of 3 meters or about 10 feet long, a height of 3 quarters of a meter or 2.5 feet, feet high at the shoulder, and a weight of around 75 kilograms or 165 pounds. Guanlong is also one of two Proceratosaurids to be discovered with a nearly complete or complete crest, giving us a pretty clear Im image as to what it looked like. It was also the first Proceratosaurid to be classified as a Tyrannosaurid, shortly after its discovery. Needless to say, Guanlong, like, like its predecessors, probably had a niche close to a fox or jackal, and likely preyed on small vertebrates like Bianotheroides, Wanotherium, Jinchankales, Yungarsuchus, and pterosaurs like Cryptodracon and Ceracipterus, small dinosaurs like Yinlong, Kulion Ceratops, Yugong Busaurus, Haplochirus, Shushugao Nikus, and the young of larger dinosaurs like Gionjunosaurus and Mementosaurus. Of course, it wasn't the top predator and likely served as prey for the 8 meter long Metricanthosaurid Senraptor. And it may have even competed for prey with Zuolong, a basal solarosaur outside of Tyrannosauridia that was close to the same size. Once again, although it lacks physical evidence, it is very likely that Guanglong was covered in a layer of filaments. Next up is Euteronine, or Feathered Tyrants, which includes the giant Proceratosaurids of the early Cretaceous. Unlike the Proceratosaurines, which played second fiddle to larger theropods like Allosaurids and Megalosaurs, Euteronines were at the top of the food chain in their respective ecosystems. They were also more robust, with larger jaws and smaller, less distinguishable crests. They are currently known exclusively from Liaoning, China, and lived during the Aptian Age of the Early Cretaceous, about 124.6 to 120 million years ago. Described in 2012, Euteranus Huali, or Beautiful Feathered Tyrant, lived 124.6 million years ago during the Aptian Age of the Early Cretaceous in the famous Yishan Formation in Liaoning, China. It is known from three different nearly complete individuals, an adult, a sub-adult, and a juvenile, and it is estimated to reach a length of 7.5 to 9 meters or 25 to 30 feet long, a weight of a height of 2 to 2.5 two meters or 7 to 8 feet tall at the shoulder, and a weight of 1 to 2 US tons. As such, Euteranus is the second largest Proceratosaurid and the largest known species of dinosaur with preserved evidence of filaments, beating out the previous record holder, an early Therizinosaur called Bipiosaurus. At such a large size, Euteranus is the first Proceratosaurid known to have filled the niche of Apex Predator. Adult Euteranus had no competition besides other Euteranus, and they would have eaten whatever they could kill, 
ranging from small herbivores like the basal ceratopsia and cetacosaurus to larger herbivores like the early hatrosauri gymsosaurus to perhaps even juvenile sauropods that might have lived in the region. Euteranus wasn't always classified as a proceratosaurid, as it was originally considered a basal panteranosaur outside of Proceratosauridae, but was later placed in Proceratosauridae when further analysis proved it to be far more basal than originally thought. Despite appearances, it does indeed possess a crest, albeit a much smaller one which was far more ridge-like than the rather thin and more elaborate crests that its smaller relatives had. The next and last known member of this group beats Euteranus as the largest of Proceratosauridae. Sinotyrannus casuensis, or Ch Chinese tyrant from Casuo, was discovered in 2009 in the Geofotang Formation in northeastern China, which has been dated to 120 million years ago during the Aptian Age of the Early Cretaceous. It is estimated to reach a length of 9 to 10 meters or 30 to 33 feet long, a height of around 2 meters or 7 feet tall, and a weight of around 2.5 US tons. In fact, it was so large that it was originally classified as the earliest known Tyrannosaurid, but was later reclassified as a Proceratosaurid. Like Proceratosaurus and Chylescus, Sinotyrannus is known from very fragmentary remains, and as such, missing information is usually inferred from closely related genera. It is considered especially closely related to Euteranus, as the two are often considered sister taxon, meaning Sinotyrannus likely had a similar coating of filaments to Euteranus. Like Euteranus, it was the top predator of its environment preying on anything it could capture, from smaller animals like Cetacosaurus, Microraptor, Pterosaurs, and birds, to larger prey like the Ankylosaur Shuang Chai Long and an unnamed Titanosaur from the region. It can also be speculated that early Hadrosaurs were present in the region as well, and as such they would have served as a common prey item for Sinotyrannus. Unfortunately, Sinotyrannus is the last known Proceratosaurid and went extinct at the end of the Aptian along with the rest of Proceratosauridae, likely due to environmental changes or new prey animals that they were not adapted to deal with. However, the lineage of Tyrannosauridae was far from over. Enter Pantyrannosauria, or all tyrant lizards. This is a clade which includes all Tyrannosaurids more derived than Proceratosauridae that has been dated as far back as the late Jurassic and extends to the end of the late Cretaceous, about 155 to 66 million years ago. Like Proceratosaurids, Pantyrannosaurus started out as small predators with three fingers. But around the early to late Cretaceous, they started to grow much larger and fill the niche of top predators. However, unlike Proceratosaurids, Pantyrannosaurs lack large head crests, usually only having small keratin crests above the eyes and some bumps along the snout. They also had a much wider geographical range, as fossils assigned to this group have been found not only in Europe and Asia, but North America, South America, and Australia as well. Pantyrannosauria has two major divisions, that being the derived group Euteranosauria and those outside of that group. So we will be covering the Pantyrannosaurs that lie outside Euteranosauria. Those outside Euteranosauria can typically be divided into three main families. Stoxosauridae, Santanoraptoridae, and Electrosauridae. But first is a Tyrannosaurid which doesn't seem to fit into any of these groups. Delong Paradoxus, or Unexpected Emperor Dragon, refers both to Delong's relationship to Tyrannosaurus and its unusual features. 
It is one of the earliest Pentaranosaurus to be classified, as it was discovered and described in 2004. Fossils of the animal have been found in the Lujiatun and Jiangshangao beds of the Yishan Formation in Baipao, China, dated to about 126 to 125 million years ago, during the Baramian age of the early Cretaceous. It is estimated to reach a length of 2 meters or 7 feet long, a height of a meter or 3 feet tall to shoulder, and a weight of 15 kilograms or about 33 pounds. Despite its relatively small size, it was among the largest theropods known from the beds, and may have filled a top predator niche. Despite common belief, Dialong likely did not coexist with fellow Tyrannosauroid U. Tyrannus, as the two are from different beds of the Yishan, and they lived about 1 to 2 million years apart from each other. Dialong likely preyed on similarly sized dinosaurs like Bipialosaurus, Cetacosaurus, and Leoceratops, as well as birds and mammals. It may have also competed with similarly sized theropods like the large Compsognathid Sinocalyopteryx. In fact, the only really large dinosaurs known from those beds are the large sauropods Dongbei Titan and Leoningo Titan, whose eggs and hatchlings may have served as prey for Delong, but otherwise the sauropods likely had no predators. Dialong's classification has shifted many times since its description, with one study in 2007 suggesting that Dialong lay outside Tyrannosauridia as a basal solorosaur, and while subsequent studies reaffirm its place as a Tyrannosauroid, it was briefly considered as a member of Proceratosauridae before being placed in Pantyrannosauria in a basal position, but outside Stoxosauridae. Dealong also has preserved evidence of filaments, which likely kept it warm. Now we're on to the first family of Pantaranosauria, which I will call Stoxosauridae, or Stokes's lizards. This group consists of Tyrannosaurids mostly known from Europe, although one is known from North America. Although they share many physical characteristics, Stoxosaurids are very diverse in terms of size, with the smallest member being the smallest of all known Tyrannosaurids, while the largest was among the largest of the basal Tyrannosaurids. As such, they likely filled a variety of niches, from small insect eaters to mid-sized carnivores to maybe even apex predators. Stoxosauridae also has a very long range compared to other groups, lasting from the Kimmeridgian of the late Jurassic to the Baramian of the early Cretaceous about 155 to 125 million years ago. The first member of this group is Avia Tyrannus Jurassica, or Grandmother of Tyrants from the Jurassic, which refers to both the Jurassic period it lived in and its position as a basal Tyrannosauroid. It is known from partial hip bones and possibly some teeth found in the Gui Marota bed of the El Cabaca formation in Portugal, which has been dated to the Camarigian age of the late Jurassic, about 155 million years ago, making it the earliest known Pantyrannosaur. It is also the smallest known Tyrannosauroid, with an estimated length of 1 meter or 3 feet long, a height of half a meter or one foot tall at the shoulder, and a weight of 5 kilograms or 11 pounds. It was discovered in 2000, but was originally described as a species of Stoxosaurus before it was given its own genus in 2003. The Alcobaca formation that Avia Tyrannus was found in is known for the overwhelming amount of mammal species found there, many of which were likely prey for the small Tyrannosauroid. Other possible prey items include amphibians, lizards, turtles, and even a small crocodilomorph called Noctisuchus. I 
I literally don't know how to pronounce that. Other dinosaurs are rare in the Gimaroda bed, with most being indeterminate, with re remains possibly belonging to Trodontids, Dromaeosaurids, Ceratosaurids, Sauropods, and Allosaurids. Ant Avia Tyrannus likely fell prey to larger theropods and crocodilomorphs like Goniophilus. Like other early Tyrannosaurids, it was likely covered in a coat of filaments, but otherwise we know very little about this animal, which seems to be a common trait in early Tyrannosaurids. The next member of this group is the earliest known Tyrannosaurid found in North America. Stokesosaurus Clevelande, or Stokes Lizard from, of Cleveland Lloyd, refers to William Lee Stokes, a geologist who discovered the first remains in 1960 and the Cleveland Lloyd Dinosaur Quarry where it was found. This quarry is part of the massive and famous Morrison Formation and lies in the state of Utah. Current dating places this quarry in the Tithonian Age of the Late Jurassic, about 150 million years ago. While it is known from fragmentary remains, current size estimates place Stoxosaurus at a length of 2.5 meters or 8 feet long, a height of 2 thirds of a meter or 2 feet high at the shoulder, and a weight of around 60 kilograms or 132 pounds making it the largest known Solarosaur in the Morrison Formation. It likely hunted prey similar in size or smaller, including smaller ornithopods like Dryosaurus, and juveniles of other dinosaurs like Countosaurus, Stegosaurus, Sauropods, and even other theropods. Stokesosaurus likely didn't have an easy life, as it could easily serve as a snack for the numerous larger theropods in the region. These included Allosaurus, the second largest and most common theropod in the region, Torvosaurus, Marshosaurus, and Ceratosaurus. It is also possible that Stoxosaurus may have competed for food with fellow Solarosaur Ornitholestes, as remains that may belong to Ornitholestes have been found in the quarry. Stokesosaurus' placement within Tyrannosauridae has shifted slightly in the past, as a 2013 study placed it within Proceratosauridae, closely related to Cynotyrannus. However, a 2016 analysis later placed Stokesosaurus outside Proceratosauridae and within what would later be defined as Pantyrannosauria. There have also been a number of closely related Tyrannosaurids classified as a species of Stoxosaurus, only to be re-described as distinct genera. These include Avia Tyrannus, as mentioned before, as well as the next member of this group. Jura Tyrant Langhammy, or Langham's Jurassic Tyrant, refers to both the Jurassic period it lived in and Peter Langham a fossil collector who discovered its remains. It is a sister taxon to Stoxosaurus that was originally described as a species of Stoxosaurus until it was re-described as a distinct genus. The partial skeleton which serves as the holotype was first discovered in 1984, but the animal was not formally described until 2008 and it wasn't until 2013 that it was given its own genus. Jura Tyrant was found in the Kimmeridge Clay Formation in Dorset, England, and has been dated to the Tithonian Age of the Late Jurassic, about 149 million years ago. Current estimates place it at a length of 5 to 6 meters or 16 to 20 feet long, a height of 1 to 1.5 meters or 3 to 5 feet tall to shoulder, and a weight of half a U.S. ton. Like Stokesosaurus, Jura Tyrant was placed in Proceratosauridae in 2013, but a 2016 study put both genera in Pantyrannosauria. While the two are sister genera, Jura Tyrant is much bigger than its North American counterpart, 
possibly the result of insular gigantism, and as such it likely hunted larger prey. While its main prey was likely basal iguanodonts, it may have also had run-ins with the 5-ton stegosaur dust and truris. However, due to its deadly tail spikes and the fact that it was 10 times heavier than Jura Tyrant, it is unlikely that adult Decentrurus had anything to worry about, although juveniles would have been more vulnerable targets. Jura Tyrant also coexisted with the giant sauropod Doria Titan, although adults would have been too big to take down, so Jura Tyrant probably would have targeted more vulnerable juveniles. There is no evidence of a larger theropod in the area, so it's very possible that Jura Tyrant may have been the top predator of its environment, meaning that Jura Tyrant would be the earliest known Tyrannosaurid to fill such a niche. It is also the largest of the European Tyrannosaurids, and a perfect warning for what is to come for this group. Next, we have the last known member of Stoxosauridae, and the last known Tyrannosaurid from the continent of Europe. Eotyrannus langi, or Lang's Dawn Tyrant, refers both to its status as a Tyrannosauroid and to Gavin Lang, a British fossil collector who discovered the first specimen in 2001. It was found in the Wessex Formation of the Isle of Wight, England, and has been dated to the Barremian Age of the Early Cretaceous Period, around 130 to 125 million years ago. It is estimated to reach a length of 4 meters or 13 feet long, a height of around a meter or 3 feet tall to shoulder, and a weight of 130 to 220 kilograms or 300 to 500 pounds. It likely preyed on small herbivores like Hypsilophodon, Thacosaurus, and Juvenile Iguanodon, but it was not the top predator, and may have occasionally been preyed on by Neovenator, an 8 meter long Neovenatorid. It also coexisted with the Spinosaurid Baryonyx, although since Baryonyx ate mostly fish, it is unlikely it would have posed much of a threat to the Tyrannosaurid. In terms of its placement in the Tyrannosaur family tree, Eotyrannus is believed to be closely related to Jurotyra and Stoxosaurus, although it was briefly considered to be a Megaraptoran. Like I said earlier, Eotyrannus is the last known Tyrannosaurid from the continent of Europe, and it is likely that the group disappeared from Europe altogether around the early Cretaceous, although the exact cause of this is unknown. While Tyrannosaurids would become extinct in the continent they originated from, they continued to thrive throughout the Northern Hemisphere, particularly in Asia and North America, and it wasn't long before they began to replace Carcharodontosaurids at the top of the food chain. The next family I will cover is what I call Santanaraptoridae, or Santana thieves, which includes all Pantyrannosaurs found in the Southern Hemisphere. Currently, this only consists of two genera, one in Brazil and one in Australia, but this group may be expanded to include new genera in the future. Both current members were small predators that otherwise have little known about them, and they lived from the Aptian to the Albion of the early Cretaceous, about 120 to 106 million years ago. Santana Raptor Placidus, or Placidos Santana Thief, refers both to the Santana group in which it was discovered and Placido Cidad Nuevens, founder of the Museum of Paleontology of Santa Ana do Cariri. It is known from a partial juvenile skeleton and fossilized tissue unearthed from the Romualdo Formation within the Santana group in northeastern Brazil in 1996 which has been dated to the Albion Age of the Early Cretaceous period about 112 to 106 million years ago. It is estimated at a max length of 2.5 meters or 8 feet long, a height of 1.3 meters or 4 feet tall at the shoulder, and a weight of 18 kilograms or 40 pounds. It is the second largest dinosaur known from the Santana Formation, 
dwarfed only by the 8 meter long 1 ton Spinosaur Irritator, but larger than the 2 meter long 7 kilogram Copsignathid Merischia. The lack of known herbivorous dinosaurs in this formation suggests that these three theropods likely relied mostly on the abundance of pterosaurs known from the formation, which include Anhanguera, Tropiognathus, Thalassodromius, Tapajara, Chirodactylus, and Tupuxuara. Given its size and build, Santanoraptor likely fed primarily on pterosaur eggs and juveniles, the omnivorous crocodilomorph Auriposuchus, the young of other dinosaurs, and perhaps even fish. Originally classified as a Manoraptoran, a group of Solurosaurs which include Ovaraptorosaurs, Therizinosaurs, Dromaeosaurs, Trodontids, and modern birds, Santanoraptor was later identified as a simple basal Solurosaur. It was first proposed as a Tyrannosauroid by a famous paleontologist Thomas R. Holtz Jr. in 2004, a position that was upheld in a recent analysis by Rafael de Clark and Orlando Grillo in 2018. So for the moment, Santanoraptor is currently considered to be a Tyrannosauroid, which is why it is in this video. Found in the Eumerala Formation of Southern Australia, which has been dated from the Aptian to the Albion of the Early Cretaceous, about 120 to 106 million years ago, the second Tyrannosaurid from the Southern Hemisphere is Tamimus hermani, meaning Herman's Tim Mimic. This animal has a lot of backstory involved with how it was named, so I'll do this a bit slowly. The generic name, Timimus, refers to two different Tims. The first is Tim Rich, son of Tom and Patricia Rich, who discovered the fossils in 1991. And the second is the Australian paleontologist Tim Flannery. The suffix mimus, meaning mimic in Latin, doesn't refer to the animal mimicking the Tims, but to its original classification as an ornithomimosaur. The species name Hermani honors John Herman, a volunteer who helped at the site for several years. Like many dinosaurs from Australia, Tamimus is only known from very scant remains. The only fossils referred to the animal being two separate femurs, likely from an adult and a juvenile. As such, it has commonly been very difficult to classify with it originally classified as an ornithomimosaur, and later being considered another type of solarosaur, either a unanlogian or a tyrannosauroid, with studies in 2012 and 2018 seemingly confirming that, for now at least, Tamimus is a tyrannosauroid, and since it is from the southern hemisphere, I am placing it in the group Santanoraptoridae. Additionally, fossils of another theropod, which may be a tyrannosaur, have been found in Australia, designated NMV P186046, giving further credibility to the idea that tyrannosaurids once existed in Australia. Like Santanoraptor, it was a small animal, at an estimated length of 3.5 meters or 11 feet long, a height of 1.5 meters or 5 feet tall the shoulder, and a weight of 45 kilograms or about 100 pounds. It likely filled a niche similar to a fox, hunting smaller animals like the turtle Otwayemis, mammals like Tynolophos and Cryorictes, and birds, as well as small herbivorous dinosaurs like Leonlinosaura and Atlascopecosaurus. It also coexisted with a small unnamed ankylosaur, likely similar to Minmi or Cunbarosaurus, and an unnamed Megaraptor and similar to Austral Australovenador. It may have occasionally fallen victim to the giant Chikutosaurid amphibian Kulosuchus, although dating for the amphibian is a bit spotty, so this isn't entirely certain. However, one unique thing about Tamimus was discovered in 1996, when Ansuya Chinsami analyzed the bone histology of Tamimus and Leolinosaura, 
which revealed that while other dinosaurs like Lael and Asura remained active all year long, Timimus may have hibernated during the cold winter months, when food would have been less abundant. Some other fossils that may belong to Timimus, like vertebrae and toe bones, have been found, but given how fragmentary Australian dinosaurs tend to be, it may take a while before we find any conclusive Timimus fossils that can tell us more about this genus. The next and final group I will cover today is one I call Electrosauridae, or Lonely Lizards, which is the most derived group of Pantyrannosauria outside of Eutyrannosauria. This group consists of Pantyrannosaurus from both Asia and North America, although the group likely originated in Asia. And members of this group are typically more robust in build than other Pantyrannosaurs, with larger heads and smaller arms, although it is unknown if they retain the three fingers of their predecessors or if they had two fingers like the more derived Tyrannosaurids. They have a pretty large range from the Aptian to the Turonian of the late Cretaceous, about 120 to 92 million years ago. Although they likely weren't the direct ancestors of you Tyrannosaurs, they at least shared a common ancestry, sharing many characteristics with the more basal members of you Tyrannosauria. This family can be divided into two subfamilies, which I will call Electrosaurinae and Suscitorinae. First I'll cover Electrosaurinae, which currently includes three genera, which are all known from Central or East Asia and range from the Aptian of the Early Cretaceous to the Campanian of the Late Cretaceous, about 125 to 74 million years ago. Pretty much every genus in the subfamily has, has slipped back and forth between being classified as Pantyrannosaurs and Eutyrannosaurs, and since they all seem to be closely related to each other, I'm just going to place them in Pantyrannosauria for now. The earliest known member of this group is Xiangguanlong Baimoensis, or Grand Pass Dragon from the White Ghost Castle, which refers to the location of its discovery near Jai Yuglan, as well as a rock formation near the fossil site. It was found in the upper member of the, of the Xiaogu Formation in northern China, which has been dated from the Aptian to the Albion Age of the Early Cretaceous, about 125 to 100 million years ago. It is estimated to reach a length of about 4 meters or 13 feet long, a height of 1.3 meters or 4 feet tall at the shoulder, and a weight of 275 kilograms or over 600 pounds. Discovered in 2008, it is the most complete Tyrannosaur from the mid Cretaceous and has helped to fill a relatively large gap in Tyrannosaur evolution. Its neck vertebrae are far more robust than earlier Pantyrannosaurs, and adaptation helps support its larger skull. This skull is more elongated than other Tyrannosaurids, giving it an almost Spinosaurid-like appearance. Jean Guanlong had other characteristics similar to more derived Tyrannosaurids, such as a short, broad brain case and expanded skull structures that allowed for more muscle attachment in the jaws, giving the animal a much more powerful bite. However, due to its elongated snout and blade-like teeth, it is unlikely that Zhang Guanlong had a bone-crushing bite like that of Tyrannosaurus. Regardless, Zhang Guanlong was the top predator of its environment, preying on herbivorous dinosaurs such as the small ceratopsian Archaeoceratops, as well as juveniles of larger herbivores like the 8 meter long Ornithomimosaur Baishen Long and the 6 ton theropod Chao Zhuan Long. While it is only known from fragmentary remains, Zhang Guanlong was likely covered in filaments like its predecessors. Timarlangia uoticas generic name refers to Timur, more commonly known as Tamerlane, the Central Asian conqueror and found, founder of the Timurid Empire in uh, modern-day Uzbekistan. 
While the specific name, Uotica, translates to well-eared, and refers to CAT scans of the animal's skull, which showed long inner ear canals equipped for hearing low-frequency sounds. It is considered a mid-sized tyrannosaur, with an estimated length of 3 to 4 meters or 10 to 13 feet in length, a height of over a meter or 3 feet tall at the shoulder, and a weight of 170 to 270 kilograms or about 370 to 600 pounds. However, these estimates are based off sub-adult specimens, so adults may have been slightly bigger. Fossils attached to the animal have been found in the Bisecti Formation in Uzbekistan, which has been dated to the Turonian Age of Lake Cretaceous about 90 million years ago. While fossils of the animal have been excavated from this formation since 1944, it wasn't until a brain case discovered in 2004 was analyzed by Tyrannosaur expert Steve Broussat in 2014 that the remains were identified as a new species. Tim Erlangia was named and described in 2016, and has since been considered a monumental discovery by further bridging the mid-Cretaceous gap of Tyrannosaur evolution. Like Zhang Guanlong, Timurlingia has traits associated with more derived Tyrannosauroids, like a larger skull and brain case, and a stronger bite than its predecessors. It was likely the top predator of its environment, preying on similar, similarly sized herbivores like the Hadrosaur Levnosovia, the Ankylosaur bisectipelta, and the Ceratopsian Tyrannoceratops. It also would have preyed on smaller animals like the small Oviraptorosaur Sanagnathesia, the Pterosaur Asdarko, as well as some of the marine fauna found in the formation, like fish, sharks, turtles, and even a currently unnamed Plesiosaur. Overall, Timurlingia is a significant stepping stone in Tyrannosaur evolution paving the way for the group to dominate the Northern Hemisphere and become some of the largest predators to ever roam the Earth. The next and final member of this subfamily is a bit complicated, both in terms of classification and its temporal range. Electrosaurus olsoni, which translates to Olson's Lonely Lizard, in honor of George Olson, who discovered the first fossils in 1923, was classified by Charles Gilmore in 1933. While it is known from fragmentary remains, Electrosaurus is believed to be a mid-sized Tyrannosaur, with an estimated length of 5 meters or 16 feet long, a height of 1.5 to 2 meters or 5 to 6 feet tall at the shoulder, and a weight of around half a US ton. Fossils of the animal have been found in the Iren Dabasu Formation and in Inner Mongolia, however the dating of this site isn't entirely certain, with some estimates suggesting a mid-Companion date, while others suggest it goes as far back as the Santonian, meaning this animal could have lived anywhere between 86 to 74 million years ago. Fossils of a Tyrannosaur, occasionally classified as Electrosaurus but likely closely related, have been discovered in the nearby Bayan Shara Formation of Outer Mongolia, which also has uncertain dating, suggesting the two formations may be contemporary with each other. Regardless, Electrosaurus is the largest carnivore in its, in its environment, preying on herbivores like Bactrosaurus, Namungosaurus, Archaeornithomimus, and more. It also coexisted with the giant St. Ignathid Gigantoraptor, although whether this animal served as competition or prey to Electrosaurus is unknown, as the diet of Gigantoraptor is a bit of a mystery. Regardless, Electrosaurus's exact placement in Tyrannosauridae is somewhat uncertain, although it is commonly believed to be the sister taxon of Xiang Guanlong and might even be a direct descendant. Although commonly considered a basal Uteranosaurian, Electrosaurus's close relation to Xiang Guanlong and Tim Arlengia suggests that they all may have been derived Pantyrannosaurus 
outside Uteranosauria. The next and final subfamily in this video is quite a recent one, with both genera within this group being described this year. This subfamily, which I will call Suscitoraninae, or coyote tyrants, consists of two genera, both of which are known from North America, specifically the United States. They typically range from the Cenomanian to the Turonian of the Lake Cretaceous, about 97 to 92 million years ago. Suski Turanians seem to share a common ancestry with Electrosaurians like Timurlingia, Jiangguanlong, and Electrosaurus, suggesting that one part of Electrosauridae may have split off from the rest of the group and migrated into North America. The Suski Turanians are distinct from Electrosaurians on the basis that they are much smaller and more lightly built due to the presence of larger theropods already present in North America, giving the Suscitoranians a similar niche to certain Jurassic groups like Proceratosaurinae and Stoxosauridae. Starting off this subfamily is Moros Intrepidus, or Fearless Embodiment of Impending Doom. Quite the name for an animal that only reached a length of 4 feet or 1.2 meters long and a weight of less than 80 kilograms or 170 pounds. This species of basal tyrannosaurid was described in February of 2019 by Zano et al. based on remains found four years prior in 2013. These remains consist of the right hind limb as well as some teeth found in the Stormy Theropod site in eastern Utah, which lies within the Musantucket member of the Cedar Mountain Formation, which dates to the Cenomanian age of the Lake Cretaceous, about 97 to 94 million years ago. It likely preyed on small vertebrates, including a multitude of small mammals, amphibians, snakes, lizards, turtles, and maybe even aquatic prey like lungfish and small sharks. Morals also coexisted with similarly sized herbivores like Hypsilophodonts, an undescribed Ceratopsian and Pachycephalosaur, and juveniles of larger herbivores like Aeolambia, Abytosaurus, and Animantarx. It was not at the top of the food chain, as it was likely preyed on by crocodile forms like Dakota Sucus, as well as the giant Neovenatorid Seats, and it may have competed for food with Dromaeosaurs. Moros is quite significant because it has helped close a near 70 million year gap in Tyrannosaur evolution in North America, and as such the media got all crazy about it upon its discovery calling it the ancestor to T-Rex and stuff like that. As if everything Tyrannosaur related has to be related back to Tyrannosaurus. Anyway, Moros shows a time in Tyrannosaur evolution in which Tyrannosaurus had not yet reached the top of the food chain in North America. For comparison, back in Asia, Tyrannosaurids like Zhang Guanlong and Timur Lengia had already reached the top of the food chain by the mid Cretaceous as Carcharodontosaurs were dis beginning to disappear from Eurasia by this point. In North America, where Carcharodontosaurs hadn't quite disappeared yet, Tyrannosaurs remained these small carnivores like those of the Jurassic. Despite this, Moros managed to survive these giant predators, and was likely the ancestor to most, if not all, of North America's Tyrannosaurs, at, or at the very least, it shared a common ancestry. This may have been partially due to characteristics in the foot bones, which suggested that Moros was cursorial, meaning it was highly adapted for running. In layman's terms, it was really fast, meaning it could not only catch very quick and agile prey, but it could also out outrun the larger predators it coexisted with to avoid becoming someone else's lunch. Moros' close relationship to Asian Tyrannosaurids like Zhang Guanlong and Timurlingia, as opposed to North American Pantyrannosaurids like Stoxosaurus, seem to indicate that Moros may have been part of a transcontinental biotic interchange between North America and Asia, 
which did occur during the mid Cretaceous. In layman's terms, Moros' ancestors likely came to North America via a land bridge connecting it to Asia sometime during the late Cretaceous, perhaps around 120 to 100 million years ago. The other new addition and the final Tyrannosaurid I'll be listing in this video is one you'll probably remember from the original video. Placed as a possible Tyrannosaurid was a small Solarosaur from the Moreno Hill Formation commonly dubbed Zuni Tyrannus that had yet to be formally classified at the time that video was made. In fact, this animal has gone undescribed since 1998. But after over 20 years, this animal finally gets an official name and classification. Meet Suski Tyrannus Hazelay, or Hazel's Coyote Tyrant, which honors Hazel Wolf, who contributed heavily to fossil digs in the Moreno Hill Formation where Suski Tyrannus was found. The generic name is also described from more than just Latin as the prefix Suski de is derived from the language of the native Zuni people which live in the area where the animal was found. The word means coyote, and its inclusion in the genus name of this animal is said to reference an old nickname for it, the Coyote of the Cretaceous. A pretty interesting backstory for the name, and a nice way to pay homage to the native people of the area. Soske Tyrannus is believed to be smaller than Moros, at an estimated length of 3 meters or 9 feet long, a height of 1 meter or 3 feet tall to shoulder, and a weight of between 20 to 30 kilos or 45 to 90 pounds. However, these estimates are based on juvenile specimens, so adults may have been larger. Both the holotype and paratype specimens are currently preserved in the Arizona Museum of Natural History, albeit with an outdated generic Solarosaur body plan rather than the new, more Tyrannosaur-like appearance. As stated before, Siska Tyrannus is known from the Moreno Hill Formation in New Mexico, which dates to the Turonian of the Lake Cretaceous about 92 million years ago. Moreno Hill is one of the few fossil formations in North America which date to the mid Cretaceous, and we have seen more and more species being described from this site, which in turn helps paleontologists better understand life in North America during this time. The formation is believed to have been a Gulf Coast with plenty of rain and heavy amounts of vegetation, and thus it was able to support many animals like Suske Tyrannus. Zunoceratops, Nothornicus, Jayawadi, an unnamed Dankylosaur, as well as fish, crocodilians, and turtles. Suske Tyrannus likely preyed on small vertebrates, but considering the fact that Zunoceratops is around the same size, suggests the two animals may have had a predator-prey relationship, similar to that of more famous Tyrannosaurids and Ceratopsids. Suske Tyrannus would have also preyed on the juveniles and young of the larger herbivores like Nothornicus and Jayawadi. It is not known if it had competition or any predators, although dromaeosaurs are a possibility, which is ironic since Suske Tyrannus was once considered a dromaeosaurid, but the presence of a larger theropod is not entirely certain. It is possible that a larger Tyrannosaurid lived in the area, but there is also the possibility that a Carcharodontosaur, possibly a Neovenator like Seats, still lived in North America during this time, especially since Carcharodontosaurs still existed during the Turanian in places like China. Once again, this is purely speculation on my part, and I might be completely wrong with this. Regardless, Suske Tyrannus is another big step towards a better understanding of the evolution of Tyrannosaurids in North America. That wraps up the updated version of Part 1, so be on the lookout for Part 2 coming out soon, and after that will be the scientific analysis of Raptors vs. T-Rex and Armageddon, followed by more natural histories. Hope you enjoyed this updated version of Tyrannosaurids Part 1, and that you learned something new today. 
That's all for today. Be sure to like and subscribe, and this is Paleo Nerd signing out.